Hi, Nathan here again with another True Tech troubleshooting tutorial. Today I would like to talk about radio buttons and what you can do with them. Uh, in our object library over here we have a radio button object and in order to create it on our form we just take it and drag it and drop it on the form. And of course most radio button scenarios will have more than one and so we need to drag a couple of these over here as we do that, we can see in our hierarchy uh, a radio button list and then individual buttons being added to that. So we have three radio buttons and we have a list. Of course, we can rename the, re rename the list. And we can rename each of the individual buttons. And as we do that, um, that gives us versatility from one to the next. Over here in the object tab we can uh, do some configuration. Of course each individual button has a caption and we can change that caption here or we can change it by coming over and highlighting and changing it here. Whichever way we choose will work. And we can also assign a value to the radio buttons in this list by going to the binding tab it auto assigns as we add them one by one it auto assigns values so by clicking on the binding tab and adding these values or we can turn off specify item values and then just the label is all the value it has we preview the form of course a radio button is by nature exclusive so only one can be chosen at a time we can also change the button style to a checkbox or a cross. We can change the way that the, the checkbox looks, make it a sunken square, uh, very versatile, but it still acts the part of a radio button. If we want to expand the fields and make them bigger, we can do so in two ways. We can click and drag individual fields in the, in the radio button list or we can drag the radio button list itself bigger and it will expand the field for us to the maximum size. Uh, one interesting note about this is uh, after you start to fool with radio button lists for a while you realize that it's a little cumbersome in Adobe Lifecycle to get them to line up correctly after you change something. And so be real careful about dragging them off uh, or trying to use them right next to other objects. One of the most powerful things radio buttons can do is when the event of a selection is made, uh, you can cause things using JavaScript to happen. And so I'm going to delete this and make visible some other things I have here on my form. So now what we have is we have a couple of text fields, uh, a radio button list that is lined up underneath the text fields, and then we have a date and image field on both. And so what we can do is we can create an effect of hiding objects that can be overridden by the radio button when we click on that particular side. So on this particular case, if we click this radio button, these two things appear. If we click on this one, those two things appear. But in the original state of the form, both are hidden. So this can create an, a unique user experience where until they make a decision, the form doesn't um, give away what uh, it's requiring of the person. So you can have that hidden until the time in which they choose it. Then they can come and begin to work with these objects, whereas these other objects over here remain hidden um, unless that side of the form is clicked on. And that's one of the most powerful things that radio buttons can do. They can, they can cause other things to happen based on the event. So let's look at the code behind that. If we go to our script editor, we can see that it's just a basic a little if-then-else if statement. Uh, if the value of the radio button list called type of notice in the checkbox original, if that's clicked, 
find out which of these two is selected. That's the selected index. If it's equal to zero, then make, of course, that means that this one has been checked. Make these objects visible and these objects invisible. And the opposite is true of this one. It's a very simple way to create a nice user experience in your forms um, by allowing the radio button uh, the ability to hide and show things when the user needs them and not before. As always, uh, you're free to check out the other videos about Adobe Lifecycle on YouTube. Um, and remember to check the blog, truetechtroubleshooting.blogspot.com. And as always, IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. So we'll see you next time. Thanks.